Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about Eels disease. Eels disease is an idiopathic occlusive peripheral periphlebitis. It usually affects young males from the Indian subcontinent. There are three stages in Eels disease. They are inflammatory stage, occlusive stage and retinal neovascular stage. Eels disease is a clinical diagnosis and it is a diagnosis of exclusion. The visual prognosis is good in cases of Eels disease. The etiology of Eels disease is still unclear. It is thought to be due to tubercular protein hypersensitivity. Some patients may even have tubercular vasculitis. Coming to the clinical features of Eels disease, the patient usually presents with floaters or sudden visual reduction due to vitreous hemorrhage. There can be associated systemic neurological features and mild anterior uveitis. Coming to the fundus findings in a case of Eels disease, Eels disease is usually bilateral but it is asymmetrical. The key fundus findings in case of Eels disease are peripheral periphlebitis as you can see in this picture. There will be sheathing, superficial retinal hemorrhages and cottonwool spots. There can also be pigmented chorioretinal scars. Other fundus findings include branch retinal vein occlusion. There can be peripheral capillary non perfusion with microaneurysms, tortuosity, vascular shunts and neovascularization as you can see in this picture. There can be recurrent vitreous hemorrhage. This is seen in one third of eyes with Eels disease. The vitreous hemorrhage usually occurs at the junction of perfused and non-perfused retina. The vitreous hemorrhage in case of Eels disease is limited and it usually absorbs over weeks. Other fundus findings include neovascularization of disc. Macular involvement is rare in case of Eels disease. Coming to the complications of Eels disease, there can be tractional retinal detachment, macular epiretinal membrane, neovascular glaucoma and cataract. Coming to the investigations that should be done for a case of Eels disease, we can do fundus fluorescent angiography to identify vasculitis and areas of non perfusion Wide field imaging can be done. We have to rule out other causes of vasculitis like sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. We should also rule out causes of peripheral retinal neovascularization like hemoglobinopathies. Coming to the treatment of Eels disease, we can start the patient on steroids in the inflammatory stage. Steroids can be given in the form of periocular, systemic, topical or intramitrial steroids. Anti-tubercular treatment can be given in combination with steroids. They can be given to avoid reactivation of prior tubercular infection. Whenever there is strongly positive skin test, or when pontiferon is positive or when severe ocular inflammatory signs are present. Scatter photocoagulation or cryotherapy of non perfused retina can be done in cases of Eels disease to reduce neovascular stimulus. Intravitreal anti VHF injections can also be given. Vitrectomy can be done when there are complications of Eels disease like persistent vitreous hemorrhage, tractional retinal detachment, and in cases of macular epiretinal membrane. Thank you.